I should probably start off by explaining a couple things. Our park does not focus on one specific theme. No. We have four sections that are fenced off from one another. There's a spooky one, a western one, an old-timey Hollywood one, and one that looks like it's entirely made of candy. We get a lot of visitors, mostly families and young couples. Every single one of us actors, the actual actors, is assigned to a specific one of the other things. The ones that are not actors, but pretend to be. Now, you might be wondering why a park would keep around non-human creatures that pose a potential threat to its visitors. And of course, you'd have to ask management for an exact answer on that one. My best guess, however, is that they are in fact good employees. They don't need to be paid. They look extremely real, and they offer a way more authentic experience. Of course, the experience cannot be too authentic if you catch my drift. That's what we, the actors, are here for. Every section has two actors and two other ones. We don't have a specific name for them, but we refer to them as pretenders, non-actors or monsters most of the time. Our main objective is to keep the one that we're assigned to under control. Make it seem like they're actors too, not a bunch of strange beings that we don't even know the origin of. Take my monster for example. I work at the horror theme section. That means my territory are the two fun houses, the larger of which is hospital themed, the indoor roller coaster, and that other really cool indoor one that winds around a gigantic skull. The roller coaster goes in through its mouth, comes out through one eye hole, and then goes back in through the other. It seems like a genius design, really. I spend my day walking around in my costume, either chasing the visitors with my whip, which for clarification is part of my role, or leading it around by its chain that's attached to the iron collar around its neck. God help us if this thing ever comes off. The one that I've been assigned to is tall, brood, and has black, surprisingly fluffy fur, a round flat face, and two big ram horns on the top of its head. Its eyes are two large red buttons, and its mouth holds a set of long, shiny, sharp fangs. Its tongue usually hangs out of its mouth, black drool dripping from it constantly. Its official name is Mr. Scratch, on a quarter of its oversized claws, but I just call it the sock puppet. Mr. Scratch is quite obvious a costume. He moves sluggishly, and there are even seams and stitchings that can be seen in some places. The costume itself, however, is a living, breathing thing. You wouldn't know if you just see it walk around by my side. I, however, found out pretty soon, on my first day, actually. When they told me that they had given me the acting job because of my physical strength and that they needed me to take care of a monster of sorts, I was dumbfounded. Then again, my job interview had included questions like, would you describe yourself as relatively fearless? And, if you were to get attacked by, say, a wild animal, would you A, fend it off, B, run for your life and call for help, or C, run and hide? So, the warning signs were already there. But of course, my first reaction was complete disbelief, which, by the way, had been replaced with stern, cold realization in record time on the very day that I started working my acting job. My manager, Dale, is a grumpy, douchey guy in his late 20s. He had me dress up in the costume that I've been wearing nearly every single day for three years now. It is very hard to describe, kinda like a goth monster hunting outfit, which comes with a whip, but it looks really fancy and is agreeably comfortable. He then led me to an extremely large cage in the horror theme section. It was standing next to the bigger funhouse. Its doors were held tight, 
by a chain with an oversized lock on it. The sign above the door read, Mr. Scratch, in big, twisted red letters. Dale then unloaded the large plastic bag that he had been carrying from his shoulder and threw it on the ground in front of me. You'll find a lamb shank and a metal leash in there, he said courtly, nodding at the bag. A lamb shank? I inquired. Dale then gave me a sleazy yellow tooth grin. We found out that it likes lamb, he replied, as if that explained anything at all. He then took out a small key from his pocket and walked over to the cage. I'll let it out for you, but just this once, so you can tame it. Once you've gotten that over with, I'll give you the key. I won't be wasting any more of my time doing your job then, he said. Part of me still thought he was messing with me, but I was beginning to have my doubts. He proceeded toward the cage and turned the key inside the lock. The door sprung open with a creaking noise and Dale stepped aside. At first, nothing happened. Then, from the part of the cage that had not yet been reached by the spear's early morning sunlight, the thing that they call Mr. Scratch emerged. It exited the cage at a very slow, menacing pace, down on all fours, but once it was outside, it rose to its hind legs and reached its head, slowly opening its mouth, only for its long, gooey tongue to drop out. I stared at the moving costume, then at Dale. I was very close to losing my composure. Are you kidding me? I asked. Tell that idiot in the costume to cut out the crap. If you guys think you can mess with the new one, I began to say. But the look on Dale's face was serious. He almost seemed a bit frightened. Feed it, he hissed. Feed it and then put on the leash, he ordered. I shook my head and rolled my eyes, but I decided to play along. I bent down and picked up the plastic bag produced a large lamb shank from inside it and waved it at the moving costume. Come and get it, I sung, feeling immensely stupid for talking to a person like it was a dog. The thing then came bounding toward me at a surprising speed and ripped the shank out of my hand. When its teeth sank naturally into the meat and I watched this creature tear it to shreds and gobble it down, I realized that I was not looking at a person in a costume. Gripped by a sudden boldness, I slowly took a few steps toward it, reached out my hand, and let my palm travel over its shiny black fur. It was warm. I could feel its chest rise and fall, and the muscles underneath its skin pulsing and moving. I was staring at this thing with wide eyes not believing what I was seeing. Finally, I sprung back into action and picked up the leash from the bag. I attached it to the metal choker and after making sure that I had a good grip on it, gave it an experimental pull. The beast's head then jerked toward me and I stumbled backwards in shock, but quickly managed to regain my footing. Luckily, the thing still seemed to be more interested in its meat than in me. Dale came strolling over and gave me a pat on the shoulder, which, for the record, is the only friendly gesture that I've ever gotten from him. He handed me the key for Mr. Scratch's cage and then told me to make sure not to lose it. I later asked him jokingly if the creature had ever attacked any of its other caretakers, to which he let out a very loud laugh before answering in a suddenly quite serious tone. No, with one exception that is, he said. And that being? I offered. Dale laughed once again before adding, Just the guy before you. He was good at his job, but we had to let him go. You can't be a monster tamer if both your legs are missing, he said. Upon seeing my startled expression, he smirked at me, and told me not to let it get to me. He was sure that Mr. Scratch liked me much better. He is most certainly not listening to this, so 
I feel safe here. When I say that, Dale is a complete asshole. In regards to the monster, I've already mentioned that I've taken to calling him the sock puppet. After listening to my description of him, I bet you can see where that's coming from. The sock puppet and I are on pretty good terms, by the way. He's never really caused me any problems. I usually walk him around the park and sometimes let him dash forward to jump scare a visitor, only to pull him back and hiss at the visitor to not get too close to him. That's our favorite trick. He ran off on me twice before, but those are stories for another day. All in all, Mr. Scratch and I get along pretty well. It's too bad that you can't say that about some of the other actors and their pretenders. When talking about my co-workers, I guess it only makes sense to start with the one who works the same part of the park as me. That would be Darius. He's a really nice guy, but easily stressed out. He talks a lot about wanting another job, but either that's just an empty phrase of his, or he hasn't found one yet. Besides, he's still around after three years of me working here. I met him on my second day on the job. Of course, Dale had failed to introduce me to any of my colleagues. He had simply given me a short overview about who I was yet to meet and what I was to expect. He hadn't put much effort into his explanation. I was on my way to Mr. Scratch's cage in the early morning about half an hour before the park's opening time for that day. I was already dressed up and ready to release the sock puppet, carrying with me the metal leash and a bag of dog treats, both of which I dropped when I collided with the man in the doctor's outfit who had seemingly came out of nowhere. By his fake blood-smeared lab coat and the surgical face mask dangling around his neck, I determined him to be another actor. Hey, I'm Darius. You must be a new tamer, he stammered, and without giving me time to answer, added, I really need your help right now, he said. Um, okay, I responded, taken back a little bit. Um, what's going on, I said. Did Dale already tell you about them, he asked, and I nodded my head. He seemed to be relieved. Oh, thank God. Okay, so I have to watch out for one myself. She's like a, like a zombie nurse. It's really hard to describe, but you'll know when you see her. Either way, we can't really put her on a leash like Mr. Scratch, so we just let her roam around this part of the park freely, under my supervision that is. But I kind of lost track of her, and now I don't know where she is. We can't have her stroll around the kid-friendly sections, or the visitors are going to freak out. You've got to help me. Please, we don't have much time, he said. I then abandoned the leash and the dog treats, and then the two of us got on our way. Darius told me that he had already looked for her in our section, so she would have to be in one of the other ones. Our first guess was the Hollywood one since it was pretty much right next to ours. While we did not find her there, Darius made use of our time by informing me about the workings of the park in a bit more detail than Dale. All the non-actors are put into cages overnight to keep them from wandering off. Half an hour before opening time, they're let out. He also told me a few bits about some of the other monsters, but said it would be best for me to find out for myself. We did not pass a single one of them on our way through the Hollywood section, but we did find the nurse. She was standing next to a food booth, the owner of which thankfully had not arrived yet. She had her back turned to us and was swaying slightly side to side. Her thigh-high nurse costume was smeared with red stains, not unlike Darius's, but something told me that no fake blood had been used on hers. Thank God, there she is, Darius muttered. Dale would have killed me, he said. What now? I asked. I'll just walk her back to our section. It's as easy as that, he replied. She's basically brain dead, 
he said. I watched as he approached her, grabbed her by the shoulders, and turned her around. I nearly gagged upon seeing her face. Half of the lower portion of her jaw was missing. The other half was dangling loosely off her head. Blood was steadily dripping from her tongue, reminding me of that of Mr. Scratch's. She was completely unresponsive, her eyes staring past me and Darius into the distance. If she knew we were there, she was not letting it show. I followed Darius, who was leading the nurse by her shoulders, back to the entrance of the horror theme section. There, we still had ten minutes left before the park would let in any visitors. Upon realizing this, I hurried to release the sock puppet from its cage and put on its leash. And that was that, basically. The sight of the undead nurse may have grossed me out for a little while, but I learned pretty quickly that she wasn't the kind that I needed to fear. There were some much, much worse things in this park than her.